One of the many reasons we build our vehicles the way we do is to handle the different challenges we'll come across while out on the trails. But do we ever really just stop and think about what kind of approach angle we're gonna need? What we want for the departure angle? How much ground clearance we'll wanna to get to get the right amount of breakover angles in comparison to our vehicle's wheelbase? And are we really all that familiar with what exactly I'm referring to with all of this geometry talk? Before we go to trailbuiltoffroad.com to purchase a suspension lift, a pair of new recovery bumpers, a package set of wheels and tires, and even before we add up the numbers on how much money it's gonna cost us, we'll wanna do the math on how to get the best off-road performance out of our vehicle first. And here's what I'm referring to, guys. When assembling the parts list for your Jeep, truck, Toyota, SUV, there are some important considerations to take into effect that can drastically increase your vehicle's off-roading capabilities, starting with the right amount of ground clearance. A suspension lift that is too high without increasing your track width, and you're gonna create an unstable vehicle in off-camber situations because the center of gravity is gonna be too high. Not enough suspension lift and you'll be scraping your frame and belly pan on every obstacle on the trail or getting what is called high centered where your vehicle gets hung up on the frame and the tires are no longer contacting the ground with enough pressure to get you moving. This is where we'll want to start with figuring out your ideal ground clearance by figuring out exactly what your breakover angle should be in conjunction with your particular vehicle's wheelbase. It might sound complicated, but it's really not if you know the correct formula. For example, to figure out the right balance of how much ground clearance you'll want to have is to first know exactly what your wheelbase is. If you're unsure, you can always go measure from the dead center of the rear wheel to the dead center of your front wheel to get your wheelbase. Sometimes it may be easier to measure from the front of the rear tire to the front of the front tire if you have someone help you hold the tape measure. Or Google is a great resource and a lot easier to use in most cases. From there, once we have our wheelbase measurement, we'll want to measure our current ground clearance taken from the ground to the lowest hanging part of your undercarriage, bottom of the frame, transfer case, or any skid plate that hangs below the frame. This ground clearance measurement isn't going to include the axles or lower A-arms at this point as we are calculating the breakover angles which are in the center of the vehicle in the middle of the front and rear tires where they contact the ground. Now the definition of a breakover angle is the maximum angle that a vehicle can drive over without the ground or obstacle under your vehicle contacting the vehicle's undercarriage. For the ease of describing it, the best way I can think of Picture a big triangle under your vehicle. The first line of the triangle starts at the bottom of your front tire and goes to the middle of your wheelbase and touches your frame. Then the line goes back down to where your rear tire is touching the ground. The angles of those lines are your breakover angles. Unfortunately, we don't have a breakover angle calculator on our website just yet, but if you search the web, you can easily find a breakover angle calculator where you type in your wheelbase, then your ground clearance, and it'll figure out the rest. So then what is an ideal breakover angle? Well, I think the answer there is that it depends on what you intend on using your vehicle for. A custom built rock crawler may want a little bit more breakover angle to clear the larger rock obstacles, but again, not too much that it makes the vehicle unstable either. Whereas a vehicle that's going to be used for overlanding per se may not want as much as a breakover angle so that the vehicle is more stable at highway speeds. But a good middle of the road breakover angle is going to be around that 30 degrees. 40 degrees of breakover angle is starting to get on the high side and 20 degrees is on the low side. And it's really all about trade-offs. The more ground clearance you want, the higher the center of gravity will be and the more unstable the vehicle gets. On the other hand, if you want your vehicle to be more stable, then you'll be sacrificing your ground clearance. But it all starts by knowing how to calculate your breakover angles first to know where to go from there and improve your vehicle's off-roading capabilities and performance. Figuring out the breakover angle is a big piece of the puzzle, but knowing your approach and departure angles are also relative to your off-roading success and minimizing damage to your vehicle. The approach angle is exactly what it sounds like and is basically the measurement of clearance that you have from your front bumper from when it contacts an obstacle 
relative to when your front tire contacts the obstacle. The better the approach angle it is, the easier it'll be to climb up and over that obstacle. Measuring both the approach angle and departure angle is best done with a straight object like a broom handle or yardstick and an angle finder. From there, place a straight handle under the tire and lift it up until it contacts either the bumper or a quarter panel or fender, and then place the angle finder on the straight edge to measure your approach and departure angles. Approaching the obstacles at an angle will also help decrease the amount of contact to the front bumper and will make it easier for the tire to contact the obstacle without bumper interference. Or installing a low clearance front bumper will increase your approach angle or even doing a frame cut and recessing the winch and front bumper will also help with approach angles. And of course, increasing the suspension lift and tire sizes also helps minimize contact to the front bumper before the tires contact that obstacle. This is the same for the departure angles as well. The least amount of body or bumpers that you have hanging behind the rear tires, the better your chances are of not dropping them on a rock or a ledge. Pickup trucks will usually have the most amount of what's known as overhang behind the rear tires and lower departure angles, whereas Jeeps will have the least amount of overhang behind the rear tires with the higher amount of departure angles. And again, 30 degrees is a pretty good target to achieve for not only just the breakover angle, but for the approach angle as well. And most vehicles will usually have more sticking out behind the rear tires than they will in front of the front tires. So 20 degrees or higher is a pretty good target to shoot for on the departure angles. And just remember guys, the better the approach angles are, the easier it'll be to drive up the obstacle. The better your breakover angles are, the easier it'll be to drive over the obstacles, and the better the departure angles are, the easier it'll be to get the hell away from those obstacles without dropping your ass end on them. But what I'd really like to hear and know back from you guys is what you all have for breakover angles, approach angles, and departure angles on your vehicles. And I'd also be really interested in hearing what the make and model of your vehicle is, what the wheelbase is, and also what your ground clearance is with the suspension lift and size tires you're running. Definitely make sure and let us know in the comments below. Or guys, even better to have you add your vehicles to our gallery on Trailbuilt with four or five really good high quality pictures showing them off along with a detailed description of them and make sure to include the specs to what you all have done to your vehicle as it also helps anybody else that may be looking to build their vehicle in a similar way. And guys, if you liked today's video or found it helpful in one way or another, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and also that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our newest videos. And guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trailbuilt, and we'll see you guys out on the trails.